nothing but loss and suffering and extinction lay ahead. Man is an animal whose dream comes true and kills him. You carry despair as your gift. Stay a while and listen. What's up, everybody? Ransom Reviews back, and today we're looking at Her Smoke Rose Up Forever, a short story collection in the science fiction genre by James Tiptree Jr. Before I even get into this review, let me just tell everybody that's watching, if you have not read this author, if you're not familiar with this collection, you need to check this author out. I cannot stress this enough. Sure, the sex and violence and death will put some off and wear others down. It's probably not for everyone, but I cannot recommend this collection enough. I've even tried to make it easy for you to dip your toe in by locating a few of the best short stories in this collection for free on YouTube. And I have put those links below in the description for the Screwfly solution and Houston, Houston, do you read? So go and listen to those two stories. They don't take that long. After your nightmares subside, buy this collection. Okay, let's get into it. Each of these stories hits like a hammer to the head, bringing you to your knees, leaving you to scramble and scoop up the fragments of your skull. And yet, I'm so glad I found this. This book is powerful, mesmerizing, and important. After almost every single story, I would pause and let it wash over me like acid rain and think about it while suffering and turn it over and over like blackened pancakes while my house burnt down around me and look it up and read about it and check to see what other people had said about it and thought about it, even for the stories I didn't like. And there were a few here that I really didn't like. That's one of the primal reasons I read, to experience something new, to think about life and the world and people. This collection of short stories achieves that and more. It's also infuriating at times with its morbid obsession with violent, rapey men, the biological imperative, and death, death, death. Okay, wait, let me back up and explain something for a second here. So this book is written by James Tiptree Jr., but it's actually written by Alice Sheldon. So Alice Sheldon was a woman who had an incredibly interesting life. She was raised by these parents who were sort of gallivanting around the world. She was in Africa when she was a kid. She was in Europe. She was in Southeast Asia. She traveled all over the world. Uh, she was an artist. She eventually uh, became a soldier or she was in World War II. I think she was like some kind of spy photographer kind of thing. After World War II, where she met her husband, she came back and they both worked for the CIA for a short period of time, she worked there before she eventually left to get her PhD in experimental psychology. And then she started writing science fiction. And at the time, she used the name James Tiptree Jr. She wanted a male pen name, probably for a couple of reasons. First of all, because at the time, I imagine it was much easier to sell her writing if she had a male name behind it in the science fiction field. And I think another reason, once you become more familiar with these stories and just how powerful and graphic and nasty they are, you might not want to have your name attached to these stories regardless. So anyways, she became James Tiptree Jr. And it's really fascinating. And I'm actually going to link her biography in the description below because there's a book written about her that looks to be very, very interesting that goes into all of this stuff. But she basically had created this persona as a feminist man, and everybody believed it. And, and uh, it was quite the uproar when they eventually found out that she was a woman, not just a woman, but she was about 55 years old in her late 50s to early 60s when a lot of her work was 
was really catching on and becoming popular. So does that explain why maybe she was obsessed with death a little bit because she was actually writing in her later years? I don't know. Did she see some things during World War II or during her time working for the CIA that just really messed her up and gave her this dark lens through which all of her stories are filtered? Again, I, I don't know, but I just wanted to refer to that because sometimes I'm going to be talking about him. Sometimes I'm going to be talking about her. Sometimes I'm going to say Tip Tree. Sometimes I'm going to say Sheldon. So I just want you to understand that they are the same person. So back to the review. Sheldon was brilliant, full of eerie, grim creativity, framed with lucid prose that danced darkly around themes of death. But she also leaned on her militant, man-hating, and singular obsession with the biological imperative, like a patient with ACL surgery would lean on a crutch. It's exhausting at times. It's a sad truth when in stories about space travel, black holes, strange aliens, that the most unbelievable element is often the rapey, apey men. Now, old science fiction was notoriously sexist. It was mostly written by older white men who either populated their stories with no women, forgettable women, regrettable women, or flirts in skirts. But the stories are almost never about how women suck. It's an unfortunate side effect. Sheldon's stories, however, are consistently about men sucking and the inescapable pulsating control of their biological imperative, often to the detriment of an otherwise interesting story. And as much as I love a fresh perspective, and this is a fresh perspective in the science fiction genre, it doesn't stay fresh long. And long after it's gone stale, Sheldon keeps on flogging the dead horse. Still, with all of that being said, I cannot recommend this book enough. I love it, even when I hate it. Now, I read this collection all in one go, which I wouldn't recommend. Just like being choked out, the darkness might induce euphoria, but it's best taken in small doses. So my favorite stories in this collection were probably The Screwfly Solution, The Girl Who Was Plugged In, and With Delicate Mad Hands. Also great is Slow Music, Houston, Houston, Do You Read, A Momentary Taste of Being, Love is the Plan, The Plan is Death, Your Faces, Oh My Sisters, Your Faces Filled of Light, the Last Flight of Dr. Ain, The Man Who Walked Home, and I Have Come Upon This Place by Lost Ways. For disappointing stories, I had The Women, who, the women Men Don't See, She Waits for All Men Born, and so on and so on. So I only have three disappointing stories in this entire collection, and one of them, The Women Men Don't See, is considered by almost everybody except for me as an all-time classic. So take that with a grain of salt, I guess. As I find the five-star system limiting, I like to use my own subjective rating system, Slice, for story, language, ideas, characters, and enjoyment on a 10-point scale, with enjoyment given a double weight. So let's take a slice of Her Smoke Rose Up Forever by James Tiptree Jr., a.k.a. Alice Sheldon. For story, I gave it a nine. The stories are mostly amazing here, but like I said, there are a few duds. For language, I gave it a 10. This is not your typical pulpy science fiction writing. This is literature. For ideas, I gave it a nine. I don't agree with many of her ideas, but at the same time, they are so thought-provoking and so stimulating, and they really, really do get lodged in your head. They are soul crushing. For characters, I gave it an eight. I feel like short stories always struggle with characterization, but there are a few good and memorable characters here. In particular, I love me some cold pig. For enjoyment, I gave it a 10. This book impacted me as much as any book in recent memory. Even the stories that I hated I was passionate about like hating them. I was reading other people's reviews. I, I was getting angry. I was thinking about them. I still think about them. And I think that's, you know, that's an achievement in its own way. So 
Again, make sure you check out the links to the YouTube short stories that I'll have in the description. I've also put links for my full review, which is insanely long. I go into every single short story and rate it, and it's almost 4,000 words long. I don't know who's going to read that. Probably no one, but the link is in the description. I've also linked the biography about Alice Sheldon, which I think is definitely worth checking out. And I've linked, of course, the book itself. A lot of links below, but definitely check them out. And as I said, I just think that everybody needs everybody needs to at least read one of her stories because I feel that she is criminally underrated in the world of science fiction. I haven't had this powerful of a reaction to a science fiction collection or a story since I started reading Philip K. Dick almost a decade ago. And Philip K. Dick is probably my favorite science fiction author. So for me to put them in the same sentence shows you how strongly I feel about what Sheldon created here. It's, it's just, I'll shut up and you just go find it and figure it out for yourself. Other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time on Ransom Reviews.